Welcome. We're going to go to our next presenter now in the AIU Symposium on Exponential Personal Growth. And our next presenter is from Nigeria, Dr. Fidelis Anorure. How do I say Anorure? Okay, let me let me help you out. Um, Please. Yeah, from Nigeria, good evening, uh, because uh, it is about um, 17 minutes to, to eight in Nigeria. So to my friends and colleagues and uh, fellow participants all over the world, yeah, I bring greetings from Nigeria to you. I bring greetings from my wife, my very beloved wife and my children, they are all behind me. Uh, thank you so very much, Dr. Um, Edward Lambert. I mean, you are quite inspirational. I, I, I would uh, suggest you project my screen from that end presentation so that we can run with it. Thank you. Okay, let me work on that right now. Make sure I got the correct one. Here we go. Okay. Um, again, uh, this is um, a rare opportunity um, and I appreciate that very, very well um, to be part of this great event. Um, I've listened attentively uh, to many presenters before me, even though I had to hurriedly leave the office to be able to come home to do this. Yeah. Um, this is personal exponential growth. So whatever I'm going to present here is personal to me. So I'm sharing my personal experience. I need to put this ahead of time so that uh, people uh, uh, be properly um, you know, aligned to what I'm going to present. Again, uh, my name is Fidelis Endoderim Anorue. So uh, take note of that. The next slide. Okay, um, the outline is as um, presented on this slide. Um, I look, uh, short introduction. Um, I put a rough start and I put a new growth path. I put the route to growth and, uh, and I put conclusion. Next slide. Okay, um, if you look at this slide, you will see some of the key words I uh, deliberately underlined. And those words will be uh, words that uh, um, will actually, um, I would like to focus on, on this. Uh, a lot of people have given pre um, definitions of uh, exponential growth. I, I don't want to bug you with uh, uh, such a definition because it might be reoccurring, but again, what I want to say here is that that exponential growth uh, can also be called a ge geometric growth. It can also be called fast growth. But what is um, key here is that uh, it refers to a pattern of data that shows greater increases with passing time. So you can measure your growth as you move, uh, uh, move along. Um, for me, I said here, personal, Exponential growth follows the same pattern of growth trajectory in life and times of an individual. Note here, that individual has to be determined. It has to be disciplined to make his or her marks in the annuals of history or leave his or her exponential growth footprints in the science of time. Again, I say exponential growth here is not attained by wishing it. I underline it. It is not a mere dream. It is a product of deliberate and intentional work. I underline deliberate, I underline intentional. And uh, you need to be focusing on the big picture because you want to get better. And this picture here talks about 
where you are now, where you are headed and how to get there. And that talks about vision and mission. To realize this personal growth, it is conceived embedded by diligent planning. And you have to do that very conscientiously. And it has to be consistent and you keep working your plan. And as you work your plan, you also monitor your growth. And as you monitor your growth, a time will come in that process when you have time to review your growth pattern to see whether your result you are, you are getting aligns with your plan. And if that does not happen, you have opportunity to review and get back to work. And in, uh, talking about personal growth, you don't just keep it to yourself. You should also allow people you know, to uh, make comments about your growth and give you feedback. And that feedback mechanism is very, very key. Um, that's what I'm trying to summarize in this introduction. The next slide. Okay. Personal growth here is a process that is underpinned by value-driven behaviors. And this value, these value-driven behaviors have to be consistent with positive impacts you want to make. And these positive impacts have enablers we call the core values. What are your core values that will enable you, you know, um, in this your growth process? For me here, the core values I'm talking about here are the plantings you do and the picture you see there, you can see, you know, the, those plantings that people are trying to nurture. So the plantings, you have to nurture them to grow. And I call them the enablers. The core values are the guiding principles that dictate behavior and that can help a person, people or company to determine if they are on the right path. Some of the core values here I have put down here include your commitment, your passion, your honesty, integrity, dependability, reliability, and efficiency. Because the growth that, that you are making or that you want to make has to, you know, um, the people around you, the community around you, they need to feel the impact and they need to benefit from that growth. The next slide. Okay, for me here, I'm, what the picture I'm trying to paint here, how it relates to me. I had a very rough start. I come from the part of Nigeria that had uh, the C Biafra Nigerian Civil War. Actually, I, I come from the Eastern part of Nigeria where that war that erupted in the 1967 and ended in 1970 lasted for 30 months. And that war impacted my own part of that country, you know, very, very adversely. The war ravaged the home, uh, my home, um, my own area of the country. Why that war lasted? Schools closed, markets and places of worship were destroyed. There was no food for people to eat. They had no potable water to drink, no clothing to wear. Again, total hunger and malnourishment pervaded the land. The population of my people in that part of Eastern was heavily decimated. 
from some of the reports I have read, well over 2 million people were lost. The only hope we I had then, or my people had then, and our prayers were just how do we survive the war? Farming, small scale businesses, the main occupation of the people in this part of the country that time stopped due to insecurity. The only hope and prayers then was how do we survive the war? We were not talking about any growth. How do we grow? You have to live to begin to think about growth. For me, my parents were very poor and only managed to eke out a living. My father died during the Nigerian Via France Civil War, leaving behind my mother now less and eight young children there. There was no growth. What I want to say here, and very profoundly too, is that there's no growth without a start or a foundation. You can't build on nothing. To some people, their start could be easy and smooth selling. To others, it could be rough, tough, and quite challenging. And I fall into that group. For me, it was tough and it was rough. The next slide. Okay. I'm trying to look at having survived the war. We needed to pick up the pieces and start life again. So this I call the new beginning. And that's the beginning of my growth path. I would like to quote Sam Harris who says, growth starts with identify self-limiting habits and beliefs and explore how to break them. And that's exactly what I did. I discovered that if I didn't do anything, having lost the war, having lost almost everything, and that I was very young, no school. I didn't want to resign to fate. I had to pick up the pieces and I consider that as a new beginning for me. Soon after, I said, when the war ended and having survived the war by the grace of God, a new beginning appeared on the horizon. Soon after, there was a ray of hope to pick up the pieces and continue the journey of growth. But at this point in time, there was no bearing. It's like somebody is traveling without a compass. I had to overcome what I called the inertia. And I will explain what inertia is. Breast up and brushing aside the odds and challenging of life to start a new life. The next slide. Okay, in physics, those who are familiar with physics, there's a property we call inertia. And uh, there, in that physics, inertia is a property of a matter which continues, it says it is a property of a matter by which it continues in its existing state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless that state is changed by an external force. If you don't do something about your situation, you remain where you are. I, I like what Francis said about you have to become uncomfortable to be able to bring about a change. It is the, the inertia here is the tendency to do nothing or to remain unchanged. So you remain in that position of inertia. For me, until you overcome that inertia, that property of matter which wants you to continue to remain in that state, then there will be no growth. 
the challenges we face, you face, I face, can be the opportunities we need for growth. And when you overcome that inertia, then growth begins. The next slide. Okay. Here for me, I try to look at, we're talking about exponential growth. What are the pathways to this growth? Number one here, you need to invest in yourself. If you don't invest yourself, develop yourself, then you can grow. You are the key actor in this process. What you did yesterday is who you are today. What you are doing today is who you will be tomorrow. So you have to recognize that. Your geometrical growth is proportional to the investment in yourself and in people around you. The more you develop yourself and develop the people around you, the more you get the support to someone. Hi. Your greatest service is growing yourself into helping others to grow. The more people you grow, the greater and the faster is your own growth path. You don't do it alone. You can't be a tree in a forest, just a single tree in a forest. I think that you, you will survive for too long. No. So you need to invest yourself. Part of the investment is, yes, I got a doctorate degree in AIU last year. For me, it's a growth. I could have sat back and said, I am done with uh, education at master's level. And I did this while I was working. It wasn't easy. And it was a time at the peak of uh, COVID. I sacrificed my comfort. And I, in fact, I, I denied my family you know, the opportunity they have. At that time, I was doing this course you know, to be with them. I will just tell you what my wife said that time, that my husband, I can see you, but you are not available. I say, yes, it's for a time. Because I know where I, I was headed, but today I am a proud degree, a PhD uh, um, degree holder of AI. And it didn't just cause by sleeping, it is by really hard work. And Edward Lambert is here. Um, he, he, he can attest to that. So you, you invest in yourself. The next slide. Okay, I, I did mention that you, while you invest your in, in yourself, also invest in people. As you grow others, you are growing as well. If you look at the picture you have there, you have a, a um, airplane, a craft being supported by a truck under. And I want to read what that picture um, you know, depicts. The picture here teaches us an important lesson Today, you are flying up in the sky. Tomorrow, you will need someone on the ground to support you. And that's the essence of why you invest in yourself. You're also investing in the people so that you can get the support you need from them. No man is an island. Investing in people or others is a springboard for your personal exponential growth today and in the future. The more people you grow, the greater and faster is your own growth. I think that's what the that picture here is telling you that you need to grow people so that I can be a support for you. Maybe the owner of the aircraft never thought in his life that a time will come when he needed a truck that will help to transport that, um, that aircraft either for service 
or for disposal, as the case may be. This next slide. Okay, and you also look at this. I try to typi typify my presentation with some of the pictures. Determination is very key. If you look at the first picture, you can see a football uh, uh, player, you know, trying to progress and make a, a, a progress or make a, a move. But there is an obstacle there he has to overcome. But he must overcome that obstacle. That obstacle is not there to stop him unless he decides to be stopped by the obstacle. For your personal growth, determination is key. And you need to take calculated risks. You see that man there on the second picture. I don't know that game, but you can see he can that 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 spring ball where he's standing can turn and he, he, that person can get injured but that should not deter him from get, engaging that in that sport and i there's a footballer I, I love so much and his name is cristiano cristiano uh, ronaldo and i have projected him here why do i like him at the age of 34 36 he's still playing active football and his performance has not dwindled. In fact, it is improving by the day. He's a focused person, he's determined, and it is that determination and focus and discipline that produce the, that produce the results. The goals, the, the laurels you see. There are, you can't get to the, you can't have the laurels or victories if you do not go through that path. So success does not know race, where you come from. It does not know religion. It does not know ethnicity. Success has a principle and it has a language. For me, success means knowing and achieving God's purpose for my life. Success means fulfilling Life's noble aspiration and ambition, in one of which is my earning a PhD at AIU. It also means relying on God's ableness in your own inability. It success means diligence, discipline, commitment, and focused dedication. Your actions have to deliberate. Your actions have to be intentional. And in, in those processes, there must be what I call continual improvement. You need to dream big and work hard to actualize the dream. Like I say, Cristiano Ronaldo is a renowned footballer. I, I, love so much and he has a phenomenal exponential growth in his career and that is my my idol the next slide next slide please okay in your quest for exponential growth you need to strive for excellence, continuously improving yourself through creativity and innovation. Don't remain stagnant, don't remain static. Life is dynamic, environments change with time and you need to adjust yourself and be flexible to adapt the changes that come your way but make the best out of those changes that come. Because what is constant in life is change. Strive to deliver the best in class performance in everything you do. Next slide. Okay. I said here, for you to grow, you need to identify a problem to solve. 
You must identify problem to solve. You need to provide solutions. Be a solution provider to your community needs in whichever capacity you can. Make needed positive and lasting impacts and impressions. If, if you are not there, what people remember you for? But if you, if you are not there, ah, if this man had been here, certain things would have happened or would not have happened. Your actions or inactions speak volumes. Add value to people's life, create value to people's lives, solve problems. And when you solve problems, you learn from it and you're growing as well. Next slide. Okay. You need to sustain any growth you have achieved. You need to sustain it. What I've discovered in life, you can climb to the top of the ladder, fine. But if you are not careful, staying at that top is a more work for you to do. Otherwise, you can fall you know, uh, all the way down to where you started. So sustainability must be in your mind. How do I sustain this growth I have attained? Act in a sustainable manner. Let your decisions consider and mirror the needs of today and future generations. Your growth should not end with you. They, your growth to the impact the generations, the future generations and the people around you. That's how it can be sustainable. Next slide. The next slide, please. Okay. Everything you have done in life or you have achieved in life or will you ever achieve in life, don't allow them to become redundant. You must find a way to apply them. So application of knowledge is essential ingredient for growth. Knowledge becomes a burden when it is not applied or used to improve your life or the life of others. Application of acquired knowledge propels growth. Again, consistency is also important. Consistency and regular practice of positive active, active, actives, that is functioning or capable of functioning, energy activity is what gathers momentum, which is the key to growth and improvement. Momentum is the engine of success. Why do I say this? I like what is happening, what AI is, is happening. It's not just enough to get a degree and walk away. No, they are keeping in touch. They are connected with you to know what is happening around you and with you and how you are applying the knowledge you have gained from the university. And this is fantastic. They don't just give you a degree and allow you to walk away, no. They monitor what you do. In fact, they need feedback. And the part of that is all these symposia that happen from time to time. And they ask you to ask you, ask me, you know, to be part of it. And we stay connected and share knowledge and get knowledge. So this is very, 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 uh, um, for me, it is incredible. For me, it is something to cherish. The next slide. I need to be a little faster because uh, of time. Next slide, please. Okay, I'm getting to actually the end of it. There's a quote here I would like to share with you. That quote says here, and you have become a new person. I'm talking about growth with divinity behind you. When I say here, I don't know the, your religion. I don't know uh, whether you're a Muslim or a Christian, a Hindu or whatever. But for me, I am a Christian and uh, without God who has given me life, 
then life would not have been, you know, the way it is with me today. So I respect that. So divinity is key for me. And you have become a new person. The new person is continually renewed in knowledge, consistent with the image of the one who created him. Growth is consistent with God's plan for man. God created man to grow. God did not create man to remain in that, uh, that infant stage. No. He wants man to dominate his environment. He wants a man to prosper. He wants man to be like him. So that picture in your mind propels you to achieve more. So divinity is key for me. I don't take the grace of God for granted. Next slide. Okay, the issue of planning. Foundation for growth of any sort is proper planning. Again, it is a popular saying that he who fails to plan, plans to fail. So your growth is dependent to some extent in how well you plan. Set target for yourself in life. In early, I set an educational target for myself. And what did it? I said many, many years ago that if I didn't get a PhD degree, I consider myself as a person who did not go to school. I felt inadequate when I had my master's degree. When I had my first degree, I still feel inadequate. But now that aspiration early in life has been attained. But again, it is not a stop for me. Learning is a continuous process. But at least I have met that aspiration. And for me, it's growth. Next slide. I don't know. Okay. Um, education is very key in everything. If you are talking about growth, we are talking about spiritual, but education is key. I tell my children that you cannot become a governor if you didn't go to school. You cannot become a local government chairman or a counselor if you didn't go to school. You cannot become a teacher if you didn't go to school. I cannot even be doing the presentation I'm making today if I didn't go to school. So education is central to personal growth. So everybody has to make effort. It's not easy, but make that sacrifice to develop yourself to the point you can be proud to say, yes, you are educated. Go, I will go back to the Nigeria Biafra Civil War. When that war ended, I asked myself, even though I was very young, what next? Surviving the war was great, but starting a new life and going back to primary school in the rubbles of war were much more challenging. With the support of my eldest brother then, I was able to go back to primary school. Having finished that primary education, I proceeded to secondary school two years after. Four years after my secondary school, I got admission into the university. During the four years waiting period, I worked in a petrol station. Um, I don't know what they call it in US, but where you dispense petrol or diesel or gasoline, I was an attendant there. You know, but that didn't stop me because I needed to do more than being a petrol seller. Then I got admission into the university, okay? With my eyes still focused on university education, I began to save a little money from the pocket, the little stipend that I was paid when I was working as a petrol attendant. Having saved some money, then I took and passed the qualifying examination into the university. In Nigeria, it's called Joint Admission and Matriculation Board Examination, JAM. Four years after my admission into the university, I graduated with a bachelor degree of science, actually in geology. While I was working in oil and gas industry, 
I did not stop. I did and completed my master's degree program 15 years after the first degree, also in geology. In, 19, in 2019, I did a short course in strategic business management at Harvard University at Boston in US. I did that from my Porsche, from my pocket. It was not sponsored by anybody. I was looking for knowledge. I was looking to get better and better equipped. Because what I've realized in life, you need to get ready for the opportunity to come. If you are not ready and not well prepared, opportunity comes and you will, you will miss, miss that opportunity. But when you are ready and equipped and opportunity comes, then that will be a success story for you. So 11 years after my master's degree, and while I still working, I earned a doctorate degree in AIE. I am still working. Today I was in the office and I had to leave office to come and prepare for this presentation. What is the import here? What I'm trying to express here is that you need to tell yourself what your growth plan is and how do you work the plan? How do you measure your growth? So I don't want to bore you with more details. Let's go to the next slide. Okay. There was also, a, I, I've told you about education, but let me tell you also about my work. The first normal work I did was to work as a patrol attendant. I've mentioned that before. As a patrol station pump attendant, I earned a small salary, about $30 a month then. After my first degree, I got employed in an oil and gas company. This time, I earned about $1,800 per month. Before I got to the university, it was $30 per month. After graduation, it was $180 per month. In the last 25 years, I've worked with international major exploration and production oil companies. My, what I earn has improved by over 1,000%. I may not mention the figure, but I, I am monitoring what that advancement and growth means, what it means to me. Okay, this shows exponential growth, rising from being just a, a filling petrol attendant to now a manager of people and business. Next slide. Next slide. Okay. I don't want to talk much about building people is very, very key. I have mentioned it before. But right now, I say my personal growth practically measures my investments in building people. In the last count, I have supported over 15 persons education 75 of these people are not related to me. I don't even know who they are. I did that sponsorship from primary through university and uh, through secondary school and university. And all these people, they are today graduates. And um, that, that number keeps going. Similarly, in 2012, from 2012 to date, I have instituted youth development and empowerment programs in my community. But this is not publicized and is intentional. And larger society, including periodic seminars, workshops, career developments, free medical programs, the program is running as we speak. I have upgraded and rehabilitated houses 
of less privileged persons in my family. I established a mini library for a primary school in my community. I want people to benefit from the goodness of God and the, the grace of God and the, the growth that is coming my way. As I'm growing, people need, need to grow with me. My projects of building a new housing, rehabilitating and renovating old ones in my community and supporting educational advancement will continue. It's on course and will continue. My avowed interest and privilege is to where it is humanly possible and where it pleases God is to eradicate poverty, hunger, and illiteracy in my community and family through access to education and other means by which they can be supported. I have a pet program my program of building people aligns with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, SDG number one. And it says poverty eradication. And number two is zero hunger. Number three is good health and well being. Number four is quality education. Number eight, decent work and economic growth. These are the issues I faced in my early days in life. My family was very poor and I want to eradicate poverty as much as God enables me and the resources are available. But I have the will, the will is there, the determination is there. I suffered hunger and my people suffered hunger and I want to see that people around me are not hungry. Health issues, hospitals were closed, malnourishment, malnourishment all over the place. People are dying of koshoka. I mean, all kinds of diseases. I wouldn't want that to happen while I live. Quality education, I already said that. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. Just be sure that you can imagine in the family of eight, I was the first graduate. And I was number four in the graduate, in that family. So what that means, those who were before me didn't go to university. So I didn't, uh, I didn't have anybody around me to gain, to learn from how to go into the university. In fact, the course I chose was what I saw in the, in the admission broke. I didn't get advice or counsel from anybody, but for me, I want everybody that is coming behind me to benefit from the knowledge I have and the counsel I can provide. The next slide, maybe finally the last, I guess. Ah, okay. In everything you do in life, even in your growth, you must learn how to be grateful. You must to show gratitude to people who in one way or the other have supported you. And you also need to understand that if God does not enable a man, in vain will he, will he work. I want to quote what uh, Michelle Obama says here. We learn about gratitude and humility that so many people had had, had had a hand in our success. Yes, today I have a doctorate degree. I needed the support of my wife. I needed the support of my children. I needed the support of the AIU, the academic staff, the administrative staff. So I wouldn't be talking about growth of success if I didn't have these people around me. So I need to recognize that support and, and uh, appreciate what contributions they have made. And that's part of the, the, the story of your growth. When eating a fruit, remember one who planted the tree. This proverb comes from Vietnamese proverb. You are today eating a tree. 
eating the fruit. But remember that somebody planted the tree that bear the fruit. Wear gratitude like cloth, and it will feed every corner of your land. This is a quote from Rumi. The last slide, the next slide, and maybe finally the last. Okay, in conclusion, I will say here that the growth to personal, the, the roots to personal exponential growth include investing in yourself and investing in people. We must lead them to attend their highest potentials in life. As you are growing people, you are growing alongside them. My personal exponential growth is practically measures my investments in building people. Exponential growth is not attained by wishing it. It is a product of deliberate and intentional work focusing on the big picture, where you are headed and how to get there. Training your brain to recognize the positives will set you up for success and growth. Build up your confidence, boost your feelings of self-worth, and recognize how much control you have over your life and career. Resetting your mindset is a crucial part of any personal growth plan. I thank you for listening. I wait for questions. Thank you. Okay, wow, Dr. Fidelis Anodue. Questions, comments, responses, this is powerful. You measure, like he says, measuring growth through building other people. That's personal growth through building other people. Come on, let's hear some comments, reactions. Um, Naganta, Sharon, I see you responding. Please open up your microphone, talk to us. What are you, what are you, what are you thinking? What are you responding? Good evening, doctor. Go ahead, we can hear you. I'm just coming back. Okay, I've just come back. I went back. I went to share doctor talking. Uh, it was wonderful. I have learned a lot from what he has said, um, especially uh, the Biafra crisis. I had um, a little knowledge about it, and um, when he was speaking, I could picture what really happened. And seeing myself in his place, uh, um, it has really boosted me a lot to like. Yes, you can become somebody out of nothing. Like you can become somebody out of nothing. You can plan and become somebody. You need to be focused. You need to be consistent. You don't need distraction. And um, um, at that point he said about um, he is the fourth child in, in the midst of seven and there was nobody ahead of him that has ever gone to university. I, I am in the same position. I'm the third out of seven, and uh, I'm the first to attend this level. You know, I have seen, I have really under, like, I have put myself in this situation, and it has really given me a step forward. It has really opened me, it opened up a path. So I'm really, really happy, Dr. Fidelis. I'm really happy. It was like somebody was speaking to me. Somebody was speaking about my future. I, I'm really happy for that. And I'm so happy to be part of it. <laughs> I'm so happy to be part of it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Dr. Fidelis, would you like to respond more? 
Yeah, I think you well said and uh, um, very well appreciated. I, I mean, again, for me, it's an inspiration and it's an encouragement. I mean, um, and it's given in good faith and with a pure heart. Well, well, well said. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, I'm just going to look around. I see Lumbai Kidesi. Would you like to uh, ask Dr. Fidelis a question? I'll go ahead and unmute your microphone. Hey. Hello, we can hear you now. It's a number W. It's Edward, how are you? Are you, are you referring to me? I, I can hear you if you if that greeting is intended for me. Well, I'm having a problem with network. That is that is why today I didn't really hello. Hello, we can hear you. Yes, I'm having a problem with network. So, oh, okay. Uh, Yes, that is the problem that I'm having today. So I'm not even hearing properly, but I'm just attending, but not, uh, didn't get everything in me. But uh, Dr. Edward, I wanted just to ask you something. I know that the topic is very, very important, but I, I wanted just to ask you about... Uh, uh, hello? I think this, the sound is breaking up. I'm not hearing it. Let, let, let's go to another question. Um, you can write your question in chat, okay? Mumbai. Okay, um, Jorge Perea Vaca. I'm looking around. Um, Alhiji Brima, do you have a question, comment? Um, yes, thank you very much, Dr. Lambert. Um, I, uh, I, I want to thank uh, Tracy and uh, Dr. Fidelis for they have some everything up as far as uh, our topic is concerned. Uh, personal exponential good. Um, as I listen keenly to Dr. Fidelis, I mirrored myself, especially coming from um, a war-torn country, a country that have experienced 11 years of brutal civil war. So as Dr. Fidelis um, um, explained uh, his presentation, I mirrored myself. Um, all I want to take this opportunity to thank Tracy and Dr. Fidelis for the well research presentation. And just to make a plea there, Dr. Lambert, that um, the presentations are made available to us after today. So that um, well, that will also be part of us as we prepare uh, for future symposium. I don't know. I really personally want to link up with uh, Dr. Fidelis. I'm allergic by my culture. I want us maybe to be friends. I am um, uh, pursuing my PhD at the AI University um, at the phase three. I'm currently doing my thesis at my final stage of my thesis. I really want to personally uh, connect, be connected to Dr. Fidelis. I don't know how possible would that be. And maybe I want to also end up by saying, Dr. Lambert, you make the presentations available to us. I want to thank you very much, Tracy and Dr. Fidelis, and uh, Dr. Lambert for making this happen. Thank you very much. Dr. Fidelis, can I go ahead and put your presentation in chat so people can download it? <laughs> yeah, I, I think you have permission to do that. Uh, regarding his request for contact, I, I'm going to put my uh, a personal email address on the chat box. Is that okay? Yes, yes that is fine. Yes, yes. that's fine. Yeah. Okay. 
I'm looking to make sure I have the right. It looks like this is the right one. Yes. Okay, I just, I'm putting the presentation. It's going to take a little bit to upload. Okay, let's move on. Apiku, Emmanuel, you have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Edward, and uh, the members for participating. I'm Apiku Emmanuel from, uh, from Northern Uganda, a place called West Nile region. Uh, one of the poorest uh, part of uh, Uganda. I'm uh, pursuing a uh, master's in uh, agriculture science and currently I work in our community as an extension uh, worker, helping farmers in the remote places with uh, agricultural technologies, giving advisory services so that at least I can contribute to uplifting the poverty level of the disadvantaged people in this country, and for the last seven years, it has been what uh, it has been my work, and uh, we are seeing results. Many uh, rural farmers are able to pay uh, their children through school because of the knowledge uh, I'm giving them freely. I also run a by Hawali. A radio extension program out of my own pocket so that I can contribute to the growth of the of the community. But then uh, when I was following the presentation of uh, Dr. Fidelis, particularly working at a gas station and raising money to go through school, uh, the hardship more or less is uh, a prototype of what I'm, I've been going through here. My story is similar to his, but what I wanted to find out is that how, how did he manage to balance his work with the studies? As per now, I get it difficult sometimes after returning from the field in the remote places on a motorcycle, reaching to my home to even give time for, 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 for my studies at AIU. But today he has encouraged me, how did he do that? And um, the second question might go to Dr. Edward. Uh, are there other students who are pursuing related courses like me with whom I can share experiences and uh, so that uh, the, the whole course becomes a bit easier for me? I would like to learn from other students who are doing related courses like me, just like the experience of Dr. Fidelis encouraging me to keep pushing on so hard. Thank you very much. Dr. Fidelis, you go first. How do you balance work and studies? Thank you so very much. And what happens is in life is that nobody stops you. It is only you that can stop yourself. What do I mean by that? Everybody has 24 hours a day. If you read the history of people that we hear about today who invented many things, they didn't have more hours than we have today. You create time for everything that you want to do. And you have your plan. So you work your plan. I work minimum of eight hours a day. In Nigeria, those who are, who are familiar with Nigeria, Normal work hours start from eight o'clock in the morning to about four or five in the evening. I have the rest of about 12 or more hours to myself. So what I do with those hours is my business. And that's the time I study. I wouldn't want my work to fund. I need the work to fund my aspiration. I need the work to get the money, to get the resources, to, to work my plan. So I must create opportunities. I did, let me tell you, I did my master's degree when I was working with Shell Nigeria. Now I did my doctorate degree when I'm working with a company called Seplat Energy. Yes, I don't want I, I, my job to interfere my with my personal life. No, because during the job, I. I dedicate my life to the work. 
But after, when I close for the day, the rest times are for me. So I manage it in such a way to, to so that my work will not suffer. My uh, personal educational advancement programs will not suffer. So you create time for yourself. If you think that time is not the issue, it's making it available at the appropriate time that is important. So you have the time to do everything you want in life if you desire to do so. So I'm not going to give you, it's not a one size fits all thing. What worked for me may not work for you. So you look at your environment and you look at you know, uh, the conditions around you and you make a decision based on the factors on the, the, the facts on ground. So I looked at the environment where I work and I, I, I needed to manage my time so that my job will not suffer. But again, it will not be an impediment to my personal um, educational aspiration. So I created time. There is time for everything. That's what I can say. That's my view on this. I can, I can add something to that is that sometimes it only takes 10 minutes to read something, but you can spend the rest of the day, even while you're working, thinking about it, how you can apply that in your life, how you can make, how you, you can apply that. You know, if you, if you read something about cover, ground cover for agriculture, mulch, and you can be thinking for the rest of the day, what kind of mulch can we use? Where can we find mulch? How can we develop that? You don't need to be at your desk reading. You can be thinking all day long on your own, even at work. And that's part of your studies is thinking. All you need is one or two ideas and then the rest of the day to think about it. And that's when you really begin to develop your knowledge when you're thinking and you read and then think. And keep your mind focused on what you're studying, what you wanna do and where you're going. And all day long, even at work, people, people may, you may talk about your studies at work and people think, why, what, why, why do you talk about that all the time? It's because you're focused. And so that's one way to, to use your work time as study time because you can think there, okay? And yes, there's a lot of students in agriculture. Myself, um, I'd Growing food in harsh conditions was one of my passions when I was growing up. Being able to grow food where there was no water, bad soil, whatever, being able to mulch it, being able to preserve that water using compost, and being able to grow your own food is something that really everybody can do in their backyard. If you have a little bit of land or a community has some land, you can develop like a, a community garden and grow food. Look at all the land around you. If you treat that land right, with a little bit of water, some compost, turn it in, feed that soil, you're gonna be able to grow food. Okay, let's go on to Herbert Asuko. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Lampard. I was unable to join in the winning the symposium started because of my network. But now I'm where it is a bit better. So I'm looking at the doctor's uh, presentation. I just discovered that the, the, these key uh, attributes are very important for success because as a a colleague says about uh, how he balances it. Well, personal development or development of anything requires one's determination, yeah. one's interest, yeah. one's effort, yeah. hardworking and patient. So applying those qualities will make one, no matter how tough or difficult the situation may, may be present such one will succeed when those three things uh, are applied. So from the presentation, I've seen that uh, uh, Dr. Fidelis uh, has applied those things from his presentation, and that is the key to his succeeding. So I will also determine to succeed by applying those things too. Thank you, Dr. Fidelis, and thank you, Dr. Lampard, for giving me the opportunity.
Yeah, well said and well appreciated. Thank you. Uh, let's move on. Ole Tokun, Julius Cayode. Do you have a question or comment? You will be presenting next. Are you able to activate your microphone? Oh, we're trying. Hello. Hello. Hello, Dr. Lamba. Go ahead. We can hear you. I'm very, very enthusiastic. I'm very, very enthusiastic to be part of this program tonight. I have actually been struggling to log into the conference to make presentation or to no avail, but I really want to appreciate God because I was able to say true. I really appreciate this program. And uh, the word of Dr. Fidel is very, very enthusiastic. All his experience, the presentation is enough for us to live a better life. In fact, most of the presentation of Dr. Fidel is today are uh, related to my presentation. Looks like the connection froze there a bit. We can come back. Let's go to Burema Kabore. Yes. yes. Hello, Dr. Lambert. Uh, well, actually, I, uh, I just want to, I want to, I want to congr congratulate uh, uh, Dr. Fidel for presentation. I want to mention that uh, presentation really is helpful for me as um, I have just finished my, um, my PhD in public health uh, doctorate and uh, I'm facing uh, something like uh, I am exhausted. I'm really tired, but I think that his presentation gave me a, a way to be uh, focused on to be focused on my objective. And I will call a vision. I just want it's just a comment uh, to say that uh, his work is really, really, really important for me, and all. For I, uh, I I appreciate it. I just I just also want to suggest something. If we if we could get the the um, the record of the presentation, I think they will help us. The recordings of these presentations will be available on AIU's YouTube channel in a few days. Okay, oh, yep. Okay, we're gonna go on. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, who else can talk? Peters Daniel, would you like to add something? Um, nope. Okay, then moving on. Aubrey Mono from Zambia. Hello, doctor. Yes. Um, thank you so much. I think uh, like everyone else has observed, Dr. I think he, he has uh, put me uh, in the mood that I, I really need in order to do my, <laughs> my, my, my study. Um, for sure, like his background, I come from a family of nine myself, and I'm second in that uh, family, uh, though last year, uh, Last year, I lost one of my brothers, so we are now eight. 
but out of my family, I think uh, I'm also the only one that is uh, trying to reach this far. Um, surely with what he has shared and with what he has achieved, um, I'm now encouraged that I can as well do uh, like he did despite the challenges of finances and everything else, but I think we still have the energy, we still have to create, you know, uh, the purpose, the focus in order to achieve um, what we have started. Like for me, I think this, this is a morale booster. I'm, I'm, I really appreciate his presentation. And of course, the other presentations that have uh, passed, but he, with him, I think I'm seeing a lot. He's doing a lot already in his community, helping out uh, the needy and uh, family members, and even people that he doesn't know. I think this, this should be our goal, even as we start with AIU. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to say something. Otherwise, uh, I'm learning a lot. Thank you, Doc. Dr. Fidelis, would you like to respond? Absolutely. Um, I mean, uh, for me, it's also quite inspirational. Uh, I mean, um, this is, for me is a word of encouragement and it's also a moral booster. Well appreciated. I thank you so very much. Now, I want to ask Dr. Fidelis a quick question. We haven't heard a lot today about the word sustainable, but you did bring that up about some of the sustainable development goals. How can, how can exponential personal growth become sustainable? Wow, um, good question. Um, everything that um, you can grow can be maintained and kept. Exponential growth Sustainability means uh, is, is, it, it's keeping that spirit of growth you know, warm all the time. You do not get to a point, you say, I have arrived, I have attained, and you stop. Anytime a man stops, a man stops learning, a man begins to die. So you have to keep that steam on as I speak. I still do some re personal research. It's just to be sure that I don't lose what I already gotten, but I, I can improve upon what I have. So that's how to keep it. I mean, the survival of a, an organization is not what on a, the, that organization has on ground right now. If that organization doesn't have a strategic growth path and sustainability, they, they, that organization will die. And that also uh, uh, you know, happens to man. You have to keep what you, have, what you have got and what you have received. If you don't keep it, if you don't make effort to keep it, you lose it. So I don't know whether I have the answer, but that's the way to keep it, uh, to, to make the, the growth you have attained sustainable. Um, team, T C H I M. Do you have? I see your hand yes. is up. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. I've been trying to put the hand, my hand up. Uh, I have some challenge in connection, but uh, very good. You did some interesting uh, comments, uh, Dr. Lambert, on uh, on uh, uh, having the mindset, open mind, actually when. When you mentioned that uh, you can read for 10 minutes and keep keep thinking about what you have read on how you can uh, apply. But I, I, more so, I wanted really to congratulate uh, Dr. Fidelis because uh, it's just amazing his presentation. Uh, uh, pretty much, uh, you know, like uh, setting an example to, to others. And uh, while he was speaking, I, would, I was looking at my own experience because I've been trying to also, he insisted on investing in yourself and investing in others. 
I've been trying to help uh, school children who cannot afford uh, to, to move on uh, for various reasons, being uh, mainly the poverty. I'm trying to, to also uh, serve uh, the communities. You mentioned that you have to really uh, identify the, pro the problem, but be mostly a problem solver and uh, be like a facilitator to others. I wanted to ask him whether, apart from a uh, money issue, what are some of the, the challenges he's been encountering? Because uh, this is, is, is very uh, informative and, uh, and, and uh, I would like to hear a little bit more about the challenges he's been encountering in trying to help his community or helping those young, young kids. Thank you very much. Okay, um, thank you. Um, in life, it is he who needs peace must be ready for war. Uh, how do I mean? There's no any task or activity or project in life that will be all through smooth selling. The challenges are there, but you would not allow the challenges to, to consume your plan and your focus. For me, I told you how I, myself and my people went through the war, the kind of challenges we had. And one thing was central in my mind, I want to succeed no matter what happens. So it was a driving force for me. I will not lie down because I am faced with a challenge. No, the challenge is there to build you up. Yeah, for me, I will, if I tell you that this journey is rosy, I, I, I'm not telling you the truth. But you are not going to be overwhelmed by, by the things you see. I think there is a popular saying that when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. There were challenges, yes. But would the challenges uh, stop my aspiration? No. And the, every challenge is surmountable, no matter how big they appear. I don't know how to say it to, so, so that people can understand me fully. But again, what I'm trying to say is that there's no waking, sleeping on your bed that is well dressed is a risk. Some people sleep and, don't, and they don't wake. But does it mean that uh, you will not sleep because somebody sleeps and does not wake? No. So be in mind that even when you start a project or start a tax, there are challenges that you need to deal with. I, I am involved in oil and gas exploration. And uh, we talk about the oil is under pressure, thousands of feet down hole. And if you walk away because of the risk involved, they will not get the oil to the surface. But what you do, you recognize that it's a risk. You put mitigations in place to manage the risk. And that's, that's, that it, it, it happens in real life. So for me, what works for me may not exactly work for you. That's the only thing I can say, but you, nobody stops you. It is only you that can stop you. Thank you. Uh, let's go to uh, Herbert. Asuko has more to say. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Lampard. I can re recall during uh, Dr. Fideli's uh, uh, presentation when he was talking about assisting, helping others to grow as he is growing. Uh, it also mentioned not just the monetary support, 
also the advice, because at times only the money will not solve the problem. Just as his personal determination in trace helps him to succeed, educating others so that they can develop a, a interest and determination to progress or succeed will also help go a long way so that the money invest, invested on them will not be something that they will neglect, they will live on the way. So I think uh, when it comes to challenge, it may be a challenge too, to also advise those that we are to assist as so that they will appreciate the money investing on them and be able to uh, make it uh, something worthwhile at the end of the day or benefit maximally. Thank you. Dr. Fidelis, would you like to respond? I think, uh, thanks for, for that support and contribution. Um, I, I did say that uh, money is important, but money, uh, uh, may, you may not have all the money you need to do all the things you want to do. But again, it is important to teach somebody how to fish than to give me a fish. Um, we have support programs, like I mentioned before, we do uh, youth development programs. Um, I, I, I run that, and if, if I get uh, some resource persons, I, I pay them. I don't give, that is not money to the bank, money to buy books, no. But again, the knowledge. So there are other things I do that is not monetary. It's not money. They, this workshop, um, youth programs, seminars, I mean, knowledge sharing and uh, using your own personal life testimonies. People learn a lot with what they can relate with. And they see you, they know that you are not, you didn't come from the moon. What you are telling them is what they see, what they can feel. So that's what I can say. Yeah, money is, is one aspect, but again, counseling, you know, uh, coaching, training, reorientating people's, uh, you know, um, uh, thinking process, redirecting their minds, let them focus to the right things and let them be useful to themselves and be useful to the community because they need, those pieces of advice, because uh, there is an adage in my place that says flies that has nobody to advise it will end up in the grave. Yeah, so those pieces of advice from us based on the experience we have and we continue to have, will help us shaping them and make them what, the, how they can benefit themselves, their families and the society at large. So it's not just about money or uh, alone, but money is critical. Because if you are telling a, 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 a hungry man that he will go to the moon today and he's still hung, hungry and it, he can't feel his stomach at that point, but money can solve that immediate need. But a long time need, the money might not be the answer to, to the problem. Thank you. Dr. Fidelis, of all of the projects that you've undertook in your life, which project was the most frustrating? Ah, uh, uh, good, good question. Frustrating. Um, I didn't see any prob any project in that perspective for frustration. But I saw it that I made up my mind there could be challenges on the way. Managing people is difficult. Getting to getting people, you know, to come close to be educated is, is not easy. Having them, those people that you actually need to help, getting the accessible, uh, uh, getting them accessible to you is also a problem. They may not even believe in your vision. They may not even believe in what you have. So managing people has been a big what I would call um, a, a little bit more challenging. Yeah, organizing them as a group. 
Um, the aspect of um, also again renovating houses within the family and this and is uh, sometimes you have this to do, but you look at the the cash at hand, and you are struggling to how do I turn this idea into into reality if the money is not sufficient. But somehow we put through. Um, then I think managing people is 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 a is a bit more difficult. But again, because you are dealing with different kinds of people, they use with their usable exuberance and the attitude. I mean, to win them over to your side is not easy. But again, I have been trained uh, in one of my uh, overseas training when I joined oil and gas to Holland in 1998. I was taught what they call the uh, man management. That is the uh, leadership skills, managing people. So that has actually helped, helped me to, no matter how difficult a person is, I will see, I will find a way to bring him to my side and we can make progress. So dealing with people is, is most challenging, yeah. Well, let's go to Patience Adeke. You have a question, comment? Uh, let's see, Patience. Oh, you don't have a microphone, I don't see. I don't see that you have a microphone connected, patients. Okay, let's go to Burema Kabore. Hello? Yes. Okay, thank you, Dr. Lambert. Thank you for some questions. Uh, uh, I need. Uh, um, if you are working on write your question in chat because your audio is not clear. Please write your, you write your question in chat. To... Your, your audio is not clear. We cannot understand what you are saying. Please write your question um, in chat. And I can, I can, then we can read it. I will, I will, I will chat it. OK, good. Um, Agantar, Sharon, you have more to say. Uh, please unmute your microphone. Okay, thank you, doctor. Yeah, I want to ask a question to Dr. Fidelis. Um, I want to ask you concerning um, educating people. Like you say he has educated many people who have already graduated from the university. So I want to ask him, how, how did he manage to gather these people? Because um, into that also, and I'm really finding it difficult to gather these people, to educate them. At times, um, you see a child who's really talented and you go to a school and opt to give a scholarship to that child and um, the parent will just come. And the, and the parent will just come up and say, no, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. Then just allow it like that. And whereas, you know, this child, um, the parent really cannot afford. And you are like, let me help. Like, are you really genuine? Are you really? So I don't really know how he did it. You know, I'm trying by the grace of God. And um, uh, if he can tell me that strategy he used, I will be happy <laughs> to, to, to guide these people to educate them to that level. I'm really finding it difficult. I'm really finding it difficult. Yes, thank you. OK, um, thank you. Um, I, I didn't. I didn't gather people in a in a place to to educate them as a group. Hello, there's a, a, a background noise uh, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I, I said when you get to a, a place, um, 
what like i said you must you must identify a problem you want to solve uh, somebody needs to move, move his or her mind. I'm getting sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 Yeah, um, you were saying, how did I gather them? I didn't gather anybody in a place. I identify one person that needs a help. I deal with that. When I deal with that, another one shows up, I deal with that. And again, I go about, you know, if I go to maybe um, when we do this uh, workshop, in that, in that uh, uh, setup, you will, and you interact with the people, you'll be able to identify a need within that group. And when you identify that need, you isolate that, that need and deal with it individually. I try to establish a, a, what I call the education foundation in my church. I tried it with certain amount of money. That was way back in 2004. Um, I discovered that um, that um, educational foundation um, didn't live, didn't survive for too long because of the way it was managed. But that did not stop because the idea was put some money there. Anybody that needed in that in that church that needed, you know, some support, the the team that was responsible for managing that the little fund can identify that need and solve that need. Okay, so I didn't bring people together and uh, said I I want to you know sponsor people, ten people, uh, 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 twelve people, fifteen people at once. No, the number grows. I identify a problem that I needed to solve. I I deal with that. So I I don't know what else to say here. So it was not. Um, I had 30 people at a time or 20 people at a time, I put them in the university, no. I identify a problem, somebody that needed to do an examination that would take him to the university, I deal with that. The person passes that exam and wants to take another examination that take him further, I come in there and deal with that. And the person eventually enters the university, I'll be providing support until the person graduates. The, the, that's the pattern. So it's not that is is a pool of people that uh, um, you know we are sub sponsoring at the same time. No. So we deal with the the problems that we identify them, and then we move along. Okay, let's move along. I see Malodi. I see you've connected your camera. Do you have something to say? A question to ask? Let me go ahead and ask you to unmute your microphone. No, I just go. no, I didn't raise up the hand. Maybe it's a mistake. I've just arrived. I'm just catching up with as they are speaking. I will ask later. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I was just wondering if you had something to say. Shaban Sakaraya. Calling on you for a comment a reaction. Oh, there you go. A thought. If you can unmute your microphone again. There you go. Hello. Thank you, Dr. Lambert, once again. And thank you, Dr. Fidelis. Uh, for sure, I learned a lot from you again. Your presentation was quite uh, nice and the practical to real life as I can learn from you. It's really inspirational. I have no reason to I mean, to be a, to be behind again. As I can see how you struggled to solve your problems that you had at the beginning. Now I see you an old man. So I can tell that uh, 
as a young person. Um, I'm really inspired by your progress. So I have to strive and make sure also I'm getting the right in my doctorate in project management. In spite of the environment that I have, I work in a difficult environment in projects in uh, villages. My project is on a rural electrification. So in most of the rural areas, we see the we have a, a, what we call a access uh, to get to the village is also very difficult. We spend a lot of time on the road. At the same time, I need to concentrate and do something on my studies. Uh, when you were answering the question about how did you manage to balance work and uh, the studies that you managed to do, I was but interested to understand something from you, but since you had a good advantage, at least you worked for eight hours, and we had time to concentrate on studies. But in my case, sometimes it's very difficult. Going to the field and returning to a place that you can have internet or whatever, you return while you're already tired and exhausted. Uh, it's really challenging, especially working in the villages. But because I'm determined and what I'm learning from you, I need to understand this environment and take more time to concentrate with my studies and to make sure I get the best out of it, despite of this challenge that I'm having. Because I'm working more than normal hours. Uh, a normal person can, can work. Yeah, it's really tough. But what I'm learning from this symposium today is really fantastic. I hope it will help me to grow exponentially. And I really see it. So thank you, AIU, for organizing this practical event like this and sharing experience from the people who have already passed through those difficult moments and they managed to do better, like Dr. Fidel. So God bless you, Dr. Sigley. God bless you, AIU family, and all the entire team that we are participating in this symposium. It's really helpful. So for me, I really appreciate it for it. And I hope I'll move on. Maybe I will be a different person as we are experiencing from the slides that have been seen from first present up to now. I haven't got tired because I got time to do this. So I'm following. I hope I will listen to the end. <laughs> Thank you all team for this organization and for the presentation and your time that you made to share your experience. You're really making a big difference. Thank you very much. Dr. Fidelis, would you like to respond? Yeah, what else can I say? Um, again, well appreciated, but they all glory goes to God. Thank you. Amen. I'm looking around. Um, I don't see anybody else with a new question. So I think, Bernardo, are you raising your hand? Yes, yes, Doc. <laughs> yes, Doc, Dr. Lampard. Actually, I like the question you have made to the presenter. When the expansion person growth become sustainable, and uh, actually that is the key objective of any achievement. So when we have not supposed to to lose time in life normally, we are studying for creating jobs. We are studying, we are getting knowledge for funding for us to create income. So if we have grown, so we have to depend on what we have done. So mean 
each and every one. After this growth, he has to create job. He has to create a cycle of producing, doing production, and getting income. Otherwise, there is no mean in growing and you don't have sustainability. That's why we, we, we say they are developed country and the other they are not because they have created their only resource. I think I will give you example again to what is happening between Russia and, uh, and Ukraine. I think for me, that is the best example. Why like uh, Russia is looking so strong? Because he has grown and he has created only sustainability for himself. So he look at, at himself like that there is no need for help for, for getting help for any other country on which uh, somehow is wrong but it looks like he has grown enough and he can sustain himself i think that is the level all of us we have to get not just having a phd and you don't you 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 are able to create job for yourself. Why did you go to school? And how do you can say I'm a, an educated person or I have passed uh, I have passed through training when you are not able to sustain yourself? So I mean we want to achieve and getting that stage so may we change the environment we change the community so many other people get benefit for what we are and that dog i really appreciate for the question that is the key objective of this meeting. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Um, again, one way, uh, one of the ways to maintain sustainability is by developing people, developing others. Because if everything is built around you, when you are not there, that vision dies, that project may die. But as you are growing yourself and you are building people and making them to believe in you and the vision and the project. And even if you are not there, the system continues to run. That is sustainability. You need people to keep the, the 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 vision going even though the vision is yours but you don't manage the vision alone so you grow people that's why i say when you invest in yourself you invest in others that was the example I, I i i showed on one of the slides where you have an aircraft being supported by the truck under okay Maybe when the aircraft was flying, he never knew that he could have a need of the truck for a support. So sustainability means developing people. Even when you are there, you can hand over the button to so that they continue to run. And again, you continue to improve yourself. Yeah, life is not static. I mean, I mean life is quite dynamic. Look at the what happened when COVID-19 just suddenly hit everybody on the face. I mean, people begin to invent. People begin, be, uh, begin to innovate. A 
again, as uh, 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 the way he says that um, necessity is the mother of invention. So sustainability is key in whatever thing you are doing. Like I said, I, I, I do my bit, but again, if I'm not there, that project should continue to run. So you need to build people around you who can support that 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 effort and make sure that it doesn't that that is a, a research that was done i haven't cited that research but the somebody said that businesses or companies in nigeria if the if those companies survive beyond 20 years then you know that the company will survive why did he do say that he said he did some research or he read some publications. And what he discovered is that even companies that start very, very well, within five, 10 years, they die. So they, they didn't plan for sustainability. And that's why they die. But you, at the onset, you plan how to sustain this business, this project, then you begin to walk the talk. So that's, that's that what I can say here is that, yes, you need to continue to improve and develop yourself and continue to develop and improve people so that that, that um, project will survive and last. Thank you. Dr. Lambert, I don't know whether you're hearing me. Yes, patience, we can hear you now. Please go ahead. Okay, okay. Um, Dr. Fidelix, I just want to thank you very much for your presentation, and I want to thank every other presenters that presented today. Honestly, when I started this program, I was just wondering how I was going to go through it, looking at my background and all the struggles I've been having in my life. But listening to every presenter has... Uh, brought a lot of encouragement to me. It has given me the hope that I can do it and that I have all it takes to be able to come out successfully and to achieve my life's dream. So I want to thank you very much, Dr. Fidelis. Your case, your issue was like um, a story of somebody that never had hope. But look at you today, you are a great success and your presentation was fantastic. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. My appreciation wants to go to, also goes to AIU team. Well, I've had, I've had my master's after my first degree, but I've never had this kind of experience where they gather people who had passed through different phases and how they have succeeded just to encourage others that are coming behind so that they will be able to make it. I want to appreciate AIU team. God will bless you all. Because um, what it does is that um, it it's, it's increases the morale of the students, makes the students want to go harder, no matter what the hurdles you're facing. If those other people made it with all their um, experience in life, and you, maybe you did even get close to what they went through and the announced success story, it means you can do it. I just want to appreciate you people. And I want to say this uh, symposium is a fantastic idea. And I want to thank every one of you for making it possible for people like us like this to participate in it. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much, Patience, for your words. Mm -hmm. And thank, thank you for uh, persisting and connecting. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, does anybody else have anything to say? You can raise your hand. Thomas Chigadaya from Zimbabwe. Do you have something to say, something to add? Thank you, Dr. Lambert. Uh, I don't have much to say, but uh, to thank AIO for this wonderful symposium, and also to thank our Nigerian colleagues for raising the moral 
Oh, thank you so much. Thank Dr. you. Dr. Edward, I have, a, I have something small to say. Sorry. Emmanuel, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. And I thank Dr. Fidelis. Uh, I was fortunate to be in Nigeria from 1994 to 1998, and then I, in Lagos. And then I, I went to Zamfara for one year in 2005. So I have some experience in, in what he's saying, and I really appreciate that. Now, what I'm asking is, uh, uh, what, uh, Dr. Fidelis, what is your opinion about having a mentor when you are uh, undergoing this sort of uh, uh, personal uh, 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 progress like this. Mm -hmm. Do you need to have a mentor somewhere that would help you apart from your, your tutors and your colleagues around there? Do you have a mentor to look up to, to get something from? And then uh, what are those you have passed through AIU and it, uh, it's a nice place. Uh, are there some, some uh, things that you might tell us who are uh, getting into this uh, that may help us to to pursue our courses in, in, in a way that is flawless or with le less less challenges. Do you have uh, some advice to give you know, that, that sort of thing you have gone through? Uh, okay, uh, yeah, again, thank you. Um, talking about uh, mentoring and mentorship, I, I wouldn't say that I had a mentor per se, but I had people I admire. Good. And I read a, a lot of books about uh, great men, I mean, in the world, those who are, I mean, uh, who have excelled. And uh, um, in my presentation, I presented uh, Cristiano uh, Ronaldo. Yes. He's, he's an, an, a, that man is, for me, is quite inspirational. I mean, uh, so I, I have things that drive me and I know people are looking up to it, but I didn't, I can't tell you, I had one person who was my mentor, no. But mm -hmm. I read so many books about great men in the world and see the, the, the path they trod. Yeah, and the, mm -hmm. nothing good uh, as Bongo Sikwe, a popular musician would sing, nothing good comes yeah. easy. You must yeah. pay the price, that's a price to pay. Yeah, so yes. the issue is that when you are determined, there must be light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, yeah so that, that is me. I didn't, I can't tell you I had one Mr. A or one Mr. B as a man. Then coming back to AIU. Yes, please. I had many, many years before now planned to do this program. But all the programs that were available to me needed me to stop my work. To be able to okay. do and I wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. But when I discovered AIU and this flexibility of working and studying at the same time was available, I grabbed it with both hands. And the, what I discovered with AIU is amazing. The university wants you to succeed. So what else can you, what can you ask for? They monitor your progress and they, they are there for you. Do you know that after I do a research and submit my research work under 24 hours or at most 48 hours, that research is assessed by my, by my instructor or by my academic advisor. And I will get, you know, the, the outcome of that project under 48 hours. And again, you monitor your progress. You determine actually how fast or how slow you can go. So the support from the AIU is, is not quantifiable. But the point I want to make is that you already have started. So if you have started, believe you can finish because what you know um you know what holds people down is procrastinating i want to i want to you cannot start you cannot finish what you have not started 
Did you get that? You can't finish what you have started. No matter how, how fanciful the idea is, no matter how the dream is, you can only finish what you have started. So I don't know whether that encourages you. Yeah, for me, I didn't have mentor A or mentor B, but I admired so people and read about them. I do a lot of research about them and I know how they succeeded. So I, I try to follow that path and that helped me. Thank you. Okay, let's go to Sally Larry Keju. Go ahead and unmute your microphone. Good evening. Good evening. good evening. Oh, good. We can hear you good. Well, firstly, I want to really appreciate the AIU team and uh, all those who are in participation to this program. I just want to share my own view concerning AIU at first. Uh, I'm a bachelor student under the Department of Mathematics. Um, Based on my activities and my program, I discovered AIU and I discovered that uh, it can really flow alongside with my program. And uh, I really want to thank the AIU team and Dr. Fidelis too as well. You are what really impressed me. You know, you are a father. Uh, it really sting the, 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 the deep in my heart, making me to know that AIU is not an ordinary place, but a place where they see into consideration of all those students, making sure that they succeed at the end. It was not easy for me based on my other activity, but when I discovered AIU, it was, it was awesome. It was good, it was good. I, I work at my own pace. So Dr. Fidelis, I'll, I'll give you an applause for your contribution, it was so wonderful. I follow up to the end. I do want to thank you. And lastly, I'm from Cameroon. So I want to thank the AIU team, Dr. Edwards too as well. And also thank my, my, my academic advisor who has always been there for me. So I want to thank the AIU team for the great work. Dr. Fidel is too, I swear. I want to thank you people so, so much. I enjoy the program. I enjoy everything that concerns AIU. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, mathematics is important. And I also think statistics is important. So if you can add statistics to your mathematics courses, it would be good. It's, it's statistics is a great use of mathematics. Uh, let's continue on. Um, Sifunzani High School. I remember you from the last symposium. Would you like to activate your microphone and add some words? Oh, we have another one from Baga Gamang. Who's going to activate their microphone first? Okay, Sifunzani High School. Yeah. Hi, Dr. Lambert and everybody. How are you? Good. How are you today? So I've just joined you. Uh, so I was uh, engrossed in some other the activities, but uh, yeah, I'm following up. Um, well, I'm not sure if um, whatever is being discussed today is uh, um, fairly new or it's um, if it's that different from what was discussed last time because I attended the last uh, uh, session. Um, so I just want to find out if is it uh, different from the, uh, the one we had last time. It meant for those who never had a chance to attend last time. There, or are, perhaps different, it's just, there, are, there are different ideas. Like one of the ideas presented today was, was when somebody dies, it's like burning down a library. All of their yeah. knowledge goes with them. So yeah. it's, it's like our responsibility to talk and share with each other, to keep our knowledge alive with other people. No, that's fine. Uh, as, as I mentioned, I've just joined. Uh, I think I'll have um, a chance to listen to see two, two speakers, two, two or three speakers. I'm not sure if you're already at the end uh, of the program or it's still in progress. Still in progress. Okay. No, I think I'll just sit in and, uh, and, and follow the, the discussion. Okay, thank you. Thank you for being here. 
And let's go to Thomas Chikadaiwa from Zimbabwe. I think you're next. Oh, and then we'll go to John Lamini. Thomas Chikadaya from Zimbabwe. Are you able uh, to <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Lambert. I don't have much to say on this symbolism, but only to thank you for organizing such a wonderful symbolism. I have learned a lot to concentrate more on the program. Thank you all presenters. Thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, if, if, I may, if I may ask, is John, is John Lamini from, from uh, Swaziland or is from uh, another country? Just as a matter of interest, Let's John find Lamini. Out. John Lamini, can you activate your microphone? Where are you from? He Hello, Dr. Lambert. Hello. Hello, we can hear you. You can hear me. Yes, so, I'm from Swaziland. So when he's, he's talking of Sponsor, it's just opposite where I'm staying. <laughs> all right, all right, uh, I think we'll, we'll hook up, we'll discuss more. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure, sure. So actually, I wanted to, to, to thank the, the AIU team for the, for the presentation at the symposium. Otherwise, um, I'm, I'm, I'm still a student and I'm working on my project now, hoping to finish soon. So thank you very much, Dr. Lambert and your team. Thank you. Yeah, let's always remember that thesis work is a major growth in your personal growth. When you finish your thesis, that is a big yeah. accomplishment. <laughs> Keep working on it. Yeah, thank you, Doc. <laughs> uh, when, I, when I get responses from the students working on their thesis, if they're having any obstacles, Almost all of them say that the biggest obstacle is time. They can't find the time to really focus, study, write, research. And so it's that idea of you only need to read like 10 to 20 minutes per day and then spend the rest of the day thinking about it or, the, or tomorrow thinking about the little that you read. And once your mind begins to think about it and you get all of these ideas, it's a lot easier to sit down and write because then the ideas come from you. So you don't need to study and research a lot. You just need to think about what you're learning and then figure out ways to apply it and then write it down. And that's, your, that's basically your thesis or your assignment. Okay, Dr. Doc. Do you have more to add on that? Uh, let's go to Marley. Let me go to ask you to un unmute your microphone, Marley. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Edward Lambert. Uh, at the same time, I would like to extend my gratitude to Dr. Fidelis, the main presenters, of today's symposium, uh, Dr. Fidelis, congratulations to you because your presentation has inspired many lives. What you have presented has touched many souls because some of us are going through uh, the experience that you have passed. Uh, it is really motivating and it is encouraging us uh, to go uh, through your path, though we may have different experiences, uh, but all along it goes through the end, the main target is success, how we can register our success individually or communally. Uh, when we talk about communally is, of course, the encouragement, what you give us, that becomes a communal, uh, you become a mentor for many people. And it becomes communal. Now, individually, it depends on the individual on us of how we can translate what we have got from you into practicality. And that is the most positive thing that I've got today in this, um, in this presentation and symposium. Uh, I've been attending a symposium 
of reason, this, this reason one of uh, January, I think I did not attend due to other factors. Uh, I was having challenges, there was no power. So it became quite difficult. But when I got this message yesterday, my tutor wrote to me, I, I thought for my side, why should I not attend? Uh, for the interest of the race, because since I enrolled in this program, uh, I missed only maybe one uh, symposium. And uh, at times our tutors used to call us, all the students under one tutor, we used to sit for a kind of meeting and share our challenges all together. So for the interest of those who might have not known uh, me, I am called Marley Max Lino. Uh, I am pursuing bachelor in philosophy. Uh, I'm now working on my research work, though the policy of, um, of AIU is saying research in a proposal in a research is uh, optional for bachelors, but I've picked interest in one of the topics that I'm doing, I want to do until the final dissertation to make it a complete uh, document because uh, uh, I'm uh, doing a kind of phenomenological experience, life experience in my particular area that people are going through it. It has become a challenge. And uh, I thought maybe it is a, a way also the voice of the, the, the people who are not heard, their voice also can, can be heard internationally uh, when they, they get such kind of transcript uh, to, uh, to read through uh, the, the, the document, uh, maybe the research papers and other things. Um, I am, uh, I picked interest also in one of a uh, uh, brother here, I wrote to him, I wrote in general here, I just wanted him to email me, Mr. Apiku, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I am very close to you, but um, I am from South Sudan, uh, so I know the name Apiku is of my tribesmate, is doing a different course, but uh, it is good also we need to experience because I'm currently in Kampala and it should be very close here in Moyo. It is necessary for us to, 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 to interact though maybe through telephones or emails, we share our experiences. The experience that he may be getting will help me and the experience that I may be going through also will help others like the experience Dr. Fidelis gave us all here today. So this is the thing that I, I would like to say I'm very proud uh, of getting the opportunity to be a member of uh, AIU. Thank you very much, Dr. Edward Lambert. Uh, this is not our first interaction with you. Uh, we have been interacting throughout. And thank you very much once again. And thank you for all the participants who are present today here. Thank you so much. It's great. It's great to connect, to get together here and connect. I don't know if there's any other questions out there. I think that'll do it. Dr. Fidelis, is there anything more you would like to add before we conclude? Um, yeah, um, I, I want to appreciate everybody who has um, stayed this long. It is um, a marathon presentation. Um, your patience is not taken for granted. And uh, the support um, that you've given is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, posterity will not forget that. Again, uh, it is my um, pleasure to uh, thank AIU for creating this platform um, for us to connect and share um, knowledge and see how we can support one another individually as a community, even the, the institution that has given us this opportunity and platform to, to um, share knowledge across the globe. Uh, it is my sincere hope that uh, we will have opportunities like this in the, in the both near and the, in, the, in the near future so that we, con we can continue to, to, to um, collaborate and integrate and uh, um, you know, improve the society uh, as a whole. Um, nobody is a, a repository of knowledge. The more we have uh, cross fertilization of ideas and uh, 
you know, multi, um, a, a multi discipline approach towards solving problems, the better it is for us uh, as a people and as a group, as a society. So on this note, I want to say thank you for, for your time and your patience. And AI, you, you I mean, it is a, I mean, I, I don't know what life would have been to me if I didn't discover AI, but um, time would tell. Thank you so very much.